Welcome to section 30 of the viruses. This is an overview image showing all of the viruses that you need to know for step one. In this section, we will be discussing respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV, which you can see right here. Our story takes place on a hot day on a busy road when traffic is stopped. And this car has been stopped in the road for so long that they just opened up the back door. To make matters worse, the car air conditioner is broken and it just adds more heat. Look at this little vent here that reads red searing vent. With a name like red searing vent, you should probably assume only hot air will come out of it. At least the makers of this vehicle were honest about what type of vent this is. In any case, the letters on this vent, RSV, help reinforce respiratory syncytial virus. RSV. Now the hot, hot heat has melted a pair of crayons in the back seat right here. Crayons will melt in the sun, so never leave them out in the car or this will happen. Anyways, this pair of mixing crayons represents that this is a paramyxovirus. So pair of mixing crayons for paramyxovirus. Now notice this little toy of a human. The human appears to be metal. This human metal toy represents human metanumovirus, or HMPV. Everything that we discuss with RSV also applies to HMPV. So think of HMPV and RSV as basically sharing the same characteristics. Associating these two together won't be hard since the red searing vent helped melt the crayons that now trap the human metal toy. Now you can see this long line of cars totally stopped, stuck in a traffic jam. This long line of cars represents the fact that RSV and HMPV are linear viruses. Notice the red warm colors seen throughout the image. The interior of the vehicle is light orange and it also has a red paint job on the outside and even the sky looks like a warm red color. At Physio, we like to use warm colors to represent RNA viruses. So these red warm colors will help you remember that RSV and HMPV are RNA viruses. So red warm colors for RNA virus. With all the pairs of crayons melting into the carpet, this unfortunate boy Slinky got stuck. Notice as he tries to pull it loose, poor guy. It's no fun losing a toy like that. As he is pulling it up, you can really see that helical shape. This helical shape represents the helical capsid in RSV and HMPV. So when you remember this helical slinky, remember that RSV and HMPV have a helical capsid. Now this baby was crying in the back seat. It's hot and it needs a diaper change. So the mom being stuck in traffic with that red searing vent to make it even hotter, she couldn't wait any longer to change the baby. Now notice this baby's ribs. It looks like he is retracting. When you are concerned an infant has respiratory distress, part of a thorough examination is watching for rib retractions, which indicate it's hard for the child to breathe. So retractions in this infant will help you remember that RSV causes respiratory distress in infants. Naturally, all of this heat led the mom to sweat profusely. So this poor sweating mom in the hot car with the red searing vent represents fever. So when you remember this struggling mother, don't forget how warm and sweaty she is. That way you'll remember that RSV and HMPV cause fever. To add to the hot sweatiness, here's a dark cloud bringing with it all the humidity and sweatiness this poor mom does not need on a day like this. For most of us, dark clouds trigger a negative, ominous feeling. The negativity of this dark cloud represents negative sense RNA viruses. So dark cloud for negative sense RNA virus. Dark clouds are helpful in representing negative sense RNA viruses for an additional and completely unrelated reason. Dark rain clouds carry lots of moisture, and negative sense RNA viruses also carry something, DNA polymerase. Positive sense RNA viruses do not carry this with them, only negative sense viruses do. So this negative appearing dark cloud should help you remember that RSV and HMPV are negative sense and carry their own DNA polymerase. So again, these negative ominous clouds carry with them all this moisture, just like negative sense RNA viruses carry with them DNA polymerase. Now this poor mom has a lot more to worry about than just changing this baby's diaper. She actually has a boogery boy up front wiping mucus all over her front seat. This gross mucusy boy represents the mucus that is produced with RSV and HMPV. The mucus or drainage causes congestion. The mucus also contributes to the respiratory distress as we demonstrated with the rib retractions on the baby. Now look at this balloon that is letting out its air as the booger boy lets it go. As it sputters around the vehicle, it makes a wheezing sound. This wheezing balloon will help you remember that RSV and HMPV cause wheezing. The presence of wheezing makes sense because of all the respiratory distress going on. The R in RSV stands for respiratory after all. Now there's some cracks over here on the sidewalk and they kind of look like the respiratory tree. Or maybe they're not cracks at all. Maybe someone else stuck in traffic like these poor people just decided to use their artistic ability and draw some lungs on the sidewalk. In any case, if you look at the ends of the branching respiratory tracts, you will see the bronchioles are red and inflamed. This represents bronchiolitis. This is a chest x-ray of a child with bronchiolitis. You can see this patchy white, which reveals the small bronchioles of the respiratory tree being inflamed. So that's classic bronchiolitis. So again, red bronchioles for bronchiolitis. 
Now, Grandpa is having a hard time with the heat as well. He stepped out long enough to rinse his eyes out with some of his trusty visine. As you can see, he has an entire pallet of visine behind him. He needs a lot, so he buys a lot. Pallet of visine kind of sounds like palivizumab. Palivizumab is a prophylactic medication only used on premature infants, and even then, only occasionally. The way this medication works is it prevents RSV from binding to the epithelial cells of the respiratory tract. But even if you forget that mechanism of action, it's not a huge deal. This medication is not very important. However, the next two items that I'm going to tell you are very important. Take this water for example. This mom is very prepared. She keeps a big tank of water in the back of her vehicle just in case she gets stranded in the heat. Water is universally required for nearly all illnesses. In fact, water is so vital for giving proper support to all patients that water represents supportive care. In RSV and HMPV, the primary treatment is simply supportive care. Keep the person alive using basic supportive means. So this water jug in the back of the van for supportive care. In addition to water and fluid monitoring, RSV and HMPV patients often need oxygen supplementation. Notice this big ol' oxygen tank that Grandpa is lugging around. You see, having dry eyes isn't the only thing Grandpa needs to deal with. He also has respiratory issues that require oxygen support. This oxygen tank and face mask represent the respiratory support that these infected infants require. So oxygen tank for respiratory and oxygen support. So now that you've learned all the material about RSV and HMPV, let's do a question to apply this. A two-week-old female is brought to the pediatrician by her mother due to persistent nasal drainage and a worsening cough. The mother states the infant has felt warm but has not taken the patient's temperature. On physical exam, the physician notices nasal flaring, subcostal retractions, and respiratory crackles on chest auscultation. The physician suspects bronchial inflammation due to a negative sense RNA virus. Assuming the physician is correct, what should be the recommended treatment? What we've read here is a common presentation of RSV or HMPV. The patient is a two-week-old female, so she's a neonate. She has nasal flaring and subcostal retractions, indicating that she's in respiratory distress. Plus, we're told that this is a negative sense RNA virus, which helps point towards RSV and HMPV as well. So again, we're dealing with an RNA virus that is negative sense, and it causes bronchiolitis, which causes respiratory distress in infants. So how do you treat this infant? Supportive care, including water as well as oxygen support. Now you may have remembered this pallet of visine and thought you should treat this infant with palivizumab, which is not the best approach. Remember, you don't use palivizumab to treat neonates with RSV or HMPV unless you are using it as prophylaxis in a premature infant. So what's the recommended treatment? Supportive care, which of course includes fluids and respiratory support. And that concludes all of the items you need to memorize for RSV and HMPV.